Praise the Lord Church. This is Sita Mrongai's Children Choir and we'll be worshipping with you. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for the day you've given us. We do not take it for granted. We'd like you to help this service, Lord, to go without any issues. We'd like you to help the people who cannot help themselves, Lord. Help the people who really need you and forgive us for our sins. In Jesus' name, amen.
Uh, thank you, worship team, for leading us in praise, worship, and prayer. We welcome all of you to Sunday School. We're so happy to have you here. We know so many of you listen on Hope FM. Many of you watch on Hope TV, and many of you also listen online. Uh, we're so happy to have you here. My name is Teacher Mabel, um, and I'll be taking you through the lesson today. But before we start our lesson, I'd like to start off with something a bit interesting. Um, I will talk about the person that we've introduced in our new series, um, especially if you didn't join us last week, you'll be able to join in this game. I'll share a few things about this very important person in the Bible, and you can tell me who he is. Number one, he speaks to the Father on our behalf. The Bible says he prays for us when we don't know what to pray. Number two, he shines a light on all the things in our lives that are wrong and also helps us make those things right. Number three, he helps us understand the things in the Bible that we find difficult to understand. Number four, he gives us power to do things, special power to do God's will. In the Bible, he empowered Joseph to interpret dreams. He empowered Joshua and Gideon to lead and Samson with great strength. Number five, he helps us take new territories in our lives. Number six, he is the very first person to be introduced to us in the Bible. And number seven, he lives inside each and every Christian today. Who is this person? Now, if you at home haven't guessed it yet, I have one more hint for you. In the Bible, he's often depicted as fire or wind. Now, we all know that we can't see the wind, but we can feel it, and we can see it rushing through the leaves in the trees, so we know it's there. It's similar to the work of this special person in our lives. We may not be able to see him, but we see his work and his power in our hearts and in the hearts of people around us. Now, this special person is the Holy Spirit. Um, now, we were introduced to this series last week um, through our teacher, um, Teacher Eve. Uh, she took us through the lesson on who is the Holy Spirit. And the memory verse was, of course, John chapter 14, verse 26. And we'll be taking the next few weeks to learn more about the Holy Spirit, who he is and what he does. Now, it may be easy to create an image of God, the Father, and Jesus in our minds, but it's a little different for, for the Holy Spirit. Like I said, his depiction in the Bible is usually a force or an object like wind or fire. So many people have concluded that he's not a person, but rather some kind of divine power. But he's so much more than that. He is a person. The Holy Spirit is the third person in the Trinity. And of course, the Trinity is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. It's one God with three distinct persons. The Holy Spirit is God in every way, and He's here to make us more like Jesus every day. Now, the Holy Spirit is revealed throughout the Bible in different ways. Many people think the Holy Spirit was first revealed in the Bible on the day of Pentecost, but he's actually revealed throughout the Old and New Testament. Like I mentioned before, he is the first person to be introduced to us in the Bible. Genesis chapter 1 verse 2 says, Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. The Spirit of God there is the Holy Spirit. In other New Testament books, we see the Holy Spirit falling on people suddenly 
enabling them to carry out a special purpose that God had given them. The judges are often described in the Bible as being empowered by the Spirit of God to defeat Israel's enemies. This includes Gideon in Judges chapter 6 and Samson in Judges chapter 15. The main craftsman who led the design and construction of the tabernacle, his name was Bezalel, is said to have been filled with the Spirit of God for his job. He was empowered to carry out his special artistic craft and work on working on the tabernacle. And then there's King David. 1 Samuel chapter 16 tells us, The Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David the day that he was anointed to be king. Now, other places we see the Holy Spirit revealed are the day when Jesus was baptized. Of course, this Holy Spirit came down in the form of a dove. And then also in Acts chapter 2, when we see um, when the disciples were gathered, there was a, um, a mighty rushing wind that came and tongues of fire that were on the heads of each of the disciples when they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, that's all good to understand, but it's also important for us to see how the Holy Spirit works today or where He is today. Today, the Holy Spirit lives in all believers. When we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit comes to live in us. The Bible tells us that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 says, do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you and whom you have received from God? Another important verse to, to see here is John chapter 14 when Jesus talks about the Holy Spirit. He says that when, um, when he would leave, then God would send a helper who would live inside of us. And in John chapter 16, um, Jesus says that it would be good for us when Jesus leaves because the Holy Spirit will come to live inside of us and to help us. Now, why would Jesus say that? Now, when Jesus was here on earth, he lived in a human body just like us. And he had the limitations of a human body in that he could only be at one place in one time. But the Holy Spirit could be everywhere at once. So the Holy Spirit is working in you at home. He's working in me here speaking on this stage and in so many people all over the world, all at the same time. So we understand who this Holy Spirit is, where He is, but it's also important for us to understand what He does in our lives today. There are many things the Bible says the Holy Spirit does in us, so let's take a look at them. Number one, He convicts us. This just means that he shines a light on all the things in your life that may be wrong. The Holy Spirit shows us right from wrong and helps us walk in the truth of God. He's that voice inside of you when you're tempted to do something wrong, like tell a lie or take something that's, that's not yours, that says, maybe you probably shouldn't do that. That voice inside of you is the Holy Spirit. Now, you may think the Holy Spirit only speaks to adults or that's an experience only for adults, but that's not true. Um, for example, you may be, you know, relaxing at home and your mom or dad tells you to do something and you just want to finish that show or finish playing that game. But something inside of you says, no, nope, stop that and, and do what your parent told you to do. That is the Holy Spirit speaking to you. The Holy Spirit speaks to all of us every day, no matter how old or young we are. Number two, he teaches and guides us. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit brings understanding. Um, so he makes the word of God clear to us. He's always pointing us to Jesus and always showing us how to live the Christian life right. Number three, he transforms us. He makes us make the wrong things in our life right. And he helps us in all our weaknesses. Number four, he gives us power. Just like he empowered the people in the Bible that we mentioned, he empowered Gideon, he empowered Samson, he empowered Bezalel, he's doing the same thing with us today. He gives us power and boldness to do everything God asks us to do. Number five, he prays for us. In Romans chapter eight, the Bible says that when we do not know what to pray, the Spirit himself intercedes for us. And lastly, he helps and comforts us. The Bible says he's our helper, he's our counselor, and he's also our encourager.
Another thing the Holy Spirit helps us to do is to take new territories, which of course is our theme for this year. The Holy Spirit works in us um, to do specific tasks that God asks us to do. There might be something special God is asking you to do this year, a new territory He wants you to take. It could be using your gift at church. It could be spending more time with God. It could also be just um, giving your best effort in your schoolwork. Whatever it is that God is asking you to do, He can give you power to do that. And that power comes from the Holy Spirit. Now, there's one territory that we are all supposed to take this year and every year, and that is to tell people more about Jesus. The Holy Spirit gives us power and boldness to share our faith. Even at your age, you can pray for boldness from the Holy Spirit. He can take you from being a shy and quiet person who doesn't like to share their faith to be someone who is not afraid to share their faith with anyone. Um, the Bible says he also convicts the world of sin. So that means that when you share the word of God or the gospel with someone and that person decides to invite Jesus into their hearts, the Holy Spirit has already been working in the heart of that person. Um, the Holy Spirit shows people their need for Jesus. That's why when we share our faith, we can trust that the Holy Spirit is working within people and um, encouraging them to invite Jesus into their heart at exactly the right time time. Now I'd like to share a video um, that will help explain this lesson a bit more. So let's stop and, and watch this video together. If you've ever heard the phrase, the Holy Spirit, and you want to know what it means, where do you start? Well, you have to start on page one of the Bible, where the uncreated world is depicted as this dark, chaotic place. But then above the chaos, God's Spirit is there, hovering, ready to bring about life and order and beauty. Okay, but what is God's Spirit? Yeah, so the Spirit is the way the biblical authors talk about God's personal presence. The Hebrew word is ruach. Ruach. Yeah, you gotta clear your throat at the end. So what is it? Well, ruach can refer to a number of different things, but what they all have in common is energy. Energy, how so? So there's an invisible energy that makes the clouds move or the tree branches sway. Right, wind. So in Hebrew, that's ruach. Okay. Now take a big breath. <sighs> So you feel that inside you? Yeah, the air? Well, specifically the energy, right? The vitality in your body that you get from breathing deeply, that too is ruach. And this is the same word used in the Bible to describe God's personal presence. Just like wind and breath are invisible, God's spirit is invisible. Wind is powerful, and so God's spirit is powerful. And just as breath keeps us alive, so God's spirit sustains all of life. Yeah, ruach. Now, as we continue on in the story of the Bible, we see God's Ruach giving special empowerment to people for specific tasks. The first person in the Bible this happens to is Joseph. God's Spirit enables him to understand and interpret dreams. And then it happens to this guy named Bezalel, and he's an artist. God's Spirit empowers him with wisdom and skills. He's given creative genius to make beautiful things in the tabernacle. And we also see God's Ruach empower a group of people called the prophets. They're able to see what's happening in history from God's God's point of view. That's exactly right. And here's the problem as the prophets saw it. While God's Ruach had created a really good world, humans have given in to evil. They've unleashed chaos into it through their injustice. A new type of disorder. Yes, and the prophet said the spirit would come, just like in Genesis 1, but now to transform the human heart, to empower people to truly love God and others. How will this new act of God's spirit happen? Well, centuries pass and we are introduced to Jesus. And at the beginning of his mission, there's this beautiful scene where Jesus is being baptized in the waters of the Jordan River. Yeah, the sky opens up and God's Spirit comes and rests on him like a bird. The story is saying that God's Spirit is empowering Jesus to begin the new creation. And we see this happening when he heals people or forgives their sins. He's creating life where there once was death. Now, Israel's religious leaders oppose Jesus and they eventually have him killed. But even here, God's Spirit is at work. The earliest disciples of Jesus, who saw him alive from the dead, said it was God's energizing spirit that raised Jesus. This is the beginning of new creation. Yes, and it's still going. When Jesus appeared to his closest followers, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. And soon after that, the spirit powerfully comes on all of his disciples. So that they can become a part of this new creation and share the good news and learn how to live by the energy and influence of God's spirit. And so today, 
The spirit is still hovering in dark places. Yes, pointing people to Jesus, transforming and empowering them so they can love God and others. And the Christian hope is that the spirit is going to finish the job. The story of the Bible ends with a vision of a new humanity, living in a new world that's permeated with God's love and life-giving spirit. What a powerful illustration of the work of the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, and also in our lives today. And that brings us to our memory verse. Our memory verse comes from Acts chapter 1, verse 8. You can write it down. It says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Now, Jesus spoke these words to his disciples before he ascended into heaven to remind them of the power that they would have access to when the Holy Spirit came upon them. And it is the same power that we have access to today because as believers, the Holy Spirit lives in us. Now, for the Holy Spirit to work in your life, you would have first need to receive Jesus into your heart as your Lord and Savior. Now, if you're listening or watching and you know that you're not a Christian and you desire to be saved, I encourage you to say this prayer with me. So we'll close our eyes and bow our heads and say this prayer together. Dear Lord Jesus, I confess that I am a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe that you died on the cross and that you rose again. I ask that you come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. Make me the person that you desire for me to be. In your name I pray, amen. Now, if you pray that prayer, you made the most important decision that you could make in your life. Um, and we pray that you find a Bible-believing church um, and you get connected to that church. We also um, suggest that you tell a parent or a Sunday school teacher that you've said this prayer so that they can lead you and guide you in the way forward. Um, and it's also good for you to start a habit of reading the Bible and connecting to God in prayer every day. Now we're coming to the end of our lesson, but let's review what we talked about today. Today, we talked about um, the Holy Spirit. We know that He lives in each and every one of us, and we see all the work that He does in our lives. And we also talked about how He helps us take new territories within our lives. I hope you join us in the weeks to follow as we talk more about the Holy Spirit um, and the work He does in our lives. We have come to the end of the lesson, but we're happy that you've joined us um, and we hope that you have a wonderful and blessed week and we hope to see you next week as well. Bye-bye.